In this video, I want to talk about the general form of work. If you're new to calculus, the general form of work may look a little scary, um, but it's not too bad if you spend a little bit of time to think about what it means. It's particularly important that you take some time to look at how uh, I defined a distance in terms of the integral of a path because that's really going to uh, help out a lot when we think about the general form of work. Okay, but even before that, we, you can't ever be vague when you talk about work. It's a, uh, a source of, of uh, uh, many conceptual misunderstandings when looking at the, the specific physics definition. So first, if we want to look at the work of a specific force, and so you think about the work done on an object by agent you know, through some force. Okay, so it goes back to the way we looked at forces originally. Every force has an object and an agent, and you want to be able to identify what they are. So if we're going to talk about work, we need to go through the same process. Okay, so there's going to be an object, and we're going to look first by the, the work done by a specific force, which means there's a specific agent that is doing work on the object through that force. Later on, we'll talk about what happens when there's multiple forces acting and how that relates to work. But first, work done by a single force, which means there's a single agent acting on a single object. Okay, so work happens. <laughs> work happens. Work happens when that object moves. So there's an agent acting on an object, and if that object moves through some displacement or some distance, some path, it moves along some path, then the object does the agent does work on that object. Okay, so now what is the general form of that? Well let's let's get our let's get our path out there so we can sort of see. So I have uh my object starts at some position and it follows some path to some final position, initial position, some final position. So I had an object traveling this path and an agent exerting a force while it happened. It may not be the net force, uh, but it was a force. So we want to find the work done by that force. Okay, so the general form then of that work is equal to the integral from my initial position to my final position of the force dot ds. This is this differential that I've identified by a vector. Okay, and so our our problem today is to understand what in the heck does this mean? Okay, this is a this is called a line integral, and if you've had uh, multivariable calculus, that's all about uh, calculating these sorts of things. We're not going to be getting into that in this course. We're not going to be doing complicated line integrals, but I do want to explore qualitatively what this means, and then be able to relate it to the type of work calculations that we are going to do, because I think that that's important to know, and and uh, it will it will. Uh, uh, help later on. Okay, so how how do we how do we deal with this? Okay, so this you'll see this is a, a dot product here between a force and this ds, which is a vector corresponding to a differential displacement along the path followed uh, by the object between the initial and final position. So let's go back to remember our idea of the the little nanobot when we looked at distance. Imagine I have my my microscopic nanobot that's following 
uh, all the way along this this path in very 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 small steps so small that each step is essentially a straight line so if I sort of blow up this curve right here and look at it bigger it's it's slightly curved and if I look at a very small section of that it looks essentially straight and so this is sort of each path of my little nanobot across this curve it looks at a real straight line now originally the nanobot then calculated each of these really small steps all the way along the path and was able to come up with the total distance that it traveled okay so we're gonna add to the uh, observational power of our little nanobot in such a way that the nanobot can also uh, measure any force that's acting on the object as it travels this path so the nanobot is connected to the to the object and it traces each little infinitesimal step and it can also identify forces and so what does this what does this do and that allows us to calculate this uh, what's inside this little um inside the integral here so let's let's first talk about um uh ds so if this is now a very very small step it has some length ds which is this super small step by the nanobot okay well not only does it have uh this very small length part of the original path it also has a direction along the path at that point for example if I were over here then and I were to blow this up there and then then blow it up even further so that it would be a we know a straight line at this point I would have a little uh, infinitesimal step here of length ds and this one would be pointed in that direction if I were to look right here the infinitesimal step might be pointed in that direction if I were to look right here the infinitesimal step I don't know how am I gonna write this might be in that direction so you can see as it goes along taking these very very small steps each one has a very small distance ds but each one associated with it also has a direction where the the direction of the that the the little nanobot is is uh, taking at that moment okay so at this moment the nanobot is taking this very small step and I can associate that with a vector then ds that has a a magnitude of just ds very small step and it's pointing in this direction along the path okay so now we say that our not only does our nanobot measure this distances it also measures it also measures forces and so it notes that at at during the time that it takes this step which is so small that it's in a straight line and so small that that any force that's acting on the object is constant over this over the time it takes to make this small step or over the distance it takes to make this small step because the step is so small and so it can measure a force and let's say it measures the force to be in that direction okay so now given that the nanobot can calculate ds which is here and can calculate the force which is here it can calculate the dot product of f dot ds which is just the magnitude of the force times cosine of the angle between this ds and f then times the very small step and so I mean at the moment we don't know what that is but nanobot does and and nanobot can calculate that so what this f dot ds is is for each very very small step that the nanobot takes along the path nanobot measures the force during that interval which is so small that the force is constant and so small that the path is straight over that interval
so that it can calculate the ds vector and the f vector, then calculates the dot product between those two vectors to come up with this uh, scalar uh, number, which it can then store. And then it takes another step, and so another step might be here. It calculates another ds, and then it calculates the force at that time, which might be different. Let's, let's bring this down here. So uh, a little later on, it calculates a ds, which is the next step. Say ds is pointing that way. And let's say the next time the f is pointing this way, but it's uh, not quite as strong. It's smaller. But that's OK. It can calculate both of those. It can measure both of those. And then it can calculate the angle between them. And then it can calculate then f dot ds, which is the magnitude of the force times the angle between them times this very, very small step that it took. And so this nanobot is making its way all the way down the path, measuring the force at each very small step that it's taking, measuring the displacement vector it's taking at each very small step, calculating this dot product, and then adding it all up. And at the very end, when it makes it to the very end, the sum, it can then uh, read out the sum of all of those very small steps. And so what, how do we represent that sum? And we represent the sum by this. The integral of all of those little, the, the calculations is then the work done on the object by this force over that path. Now, one thing to note is that because the the force isn't always a positive isn't always a, a positive number. For example, let's say let's take a look at uh, say th this segment right here. I'm going to move down here so we have some very small step that uh, gives me a ds. I don't. I guess I'm changing colors here, but gives me a ds at this, uh, for that very small step that's pointing in that direction. And let's say at that moment, the force was acting in that direction. In that case, the result, f dot ds, which would be the magnitude of the force times cosine the angle between them. Remember, this angle changes for every very small step, possibly, and then that times that very small s the step distance, and this would be less than zero in this case because theta is is uh, greater than ninety degrees, and so some of these steps might be negative, but in that case it subtracts from the total, and so Danabot calculates all the positive. Uh, um, amounts of this quantity, then subtracts all the negative amounts from that quantity, and at the very end we have the total work that's done on the object by this individual force. Okay, that's sort of a very important qualitative way to think about it. However, I haven't really given you a recipe in how to calculate these sorts of things in general. And to do it in general, you do need multivariable calculus to be able to do line integrals. But we're going to do this now for some simple examples. But in each case, we're going to bring it back to this idea of uh, stepping along in, in very small segments, calculating this dot product uh, at each step, and seeing what sort of result that gives us in the end.